I think that this is one of the strongest arguments that they have against this, actually. I call BS. I think Pharrell the S was <laughs> lied to. C3PO just got unplugged. <laughs> it's clear that he lied. My faith is shattered. Oh. Oh. Here's the deal. God cannot lie. We can misunderstand what he says. I would judge you based on looks, and Mormons are just better looking. To all you evangelicals out there listening to this, guys, this doesn't work. This guy right here is literally like an abusive cop. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Warren Radio. I am your host, Cardin Ellis, and today I'm joined in the studio by Luke Hansen, as well as Brad Whitbeck and Jonah Barnes. And today, Luke Hansen has brought us a little bit of a debunking here. Indeed. You came across a video titled, man, it's hard to believe I, evangelicals. I didn't come across this video. It kept popping up in my feed over and over and over again. Oh, mm. okay. Oh, no. uh, it's a sign. I watched Wait, which one was these. it? Mormons aren't Christians? Uh, uh, well, that's, you know, there's a dozen of those. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which flavor? It was, yeah. <laughs> the Bible versus Joseph Smith. Indeed. So today we're going to see clips from the Bible versus Joseph Smith and debunk the Bible versus Joseph Smith. So this is your segment, bro. I'm just the captain of the ship, but it's your segment. That's a bad example. Lead on. Lead on, Luke Hansen. All right. So this is a video that came out a year, almost two years ago or so, and it has 420,000 views ish. Oh, and nice. so, yeah, it's, what? you know, it's, it's made the rounds, but what it is, it's, it's a reposting by the guy who made it of a DVD they made back in like 2010. Like these are the things that they'll pass out in the parking lots back in like the early 2000s. Oh, yeah. Wait, remember um, like rule number nine of the first 30 steps of how to be an anti-Mormon, that list that I wrote, it's mm -hmm. always, they recycle old lies. So they're literally recycling their DVDs onto YouTube. Oh Yeah. Oh, but it has classic. traction. Like 400 something thousand views is not too Dang, bad for yeah. a reposting of a 2010 yeah. DVD yeah, that that's they put impressive. out in parking lots of Latter day Saint chapels mm -hmm. during church. So, oh, yeah, th this okay. is what it is. And the, the kind of gimmick that's going on here is it's a Bible expert. He's actually focused on like biblical evidences. Mm -hmm. So, okay. this video is kind of is like a weird Frankenstein's monster of look at all these Bible evidences and then look at all these not Book of Mormon evidences and comparing the two. Oh, interesting. And it's put, it's put within the structure structure of him kind of interviewing a Latter-day Saint. Uh, so he's like wait. talking to the Latter-day Saint and like, can you answer this question? And the guy is like, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see that a little so, bit later. And then he goes back and like, let's, here's me interviewing this expert about this topic and here's what he says. So, so that's it's how really it's structured. Yeah. The Bible versus the Book of Mormon, but they're calling it the Bible versus Joseph Smith. They, they bring in Joseph Smith at the end. And since uh -huh. they consider Joseph Smith to be the author of the Book of Mormon. Okay. It's, it's so they have the faulty the framing from the beginning. From the very start. Uh, yeah. Of, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. when Trent Horn says believers shouldn't argue like atheists, but then you watch anti-Mormon content and it's nothing but supposed believers arguing like exactly atheists. Exactly like atheists. Okay. Well, let's dive right in. We don't want to bury the lead. Okay. So uh, you got clips here. Do we just yeah. play the clips so and react? We're going we're gonna to look through the evidences. And then okay. at the end, the cherry on top is the actual interview with this Latter-day Saint. We're going to oh, look at boy. some clips from that and see maybe if we could take some lessons away on what not to do when you're in some sort of situation like this. But okay, cool. we're going to we're going to start with the meat. You know, we're going to start with the actual evidences. So, yeah, let's hit it. He's going to go to First Nephi 13. OK, cool. So here we are. First Nephi 13. The first prophet we will test is the Book of Mormon prophet Nephi. Love the music. Well, it's always been my understanding that there has been <laughs> one manuscript. So this is the Latter day Saints. It faded over time, then monks would free copy it over and over and over again as the manuscript would fade, then they'd create a new one with new ink. And if they didn't like the way something read, <laughs> He's straw manning this. Or if they thought it was too controversial, they'd just leave it out. This is impossible because wait, soon wait, wait. after the original writing, so that's the Latter Day Saint. That there was so that's no... the Latter Day Saint he's interviewing, explaining how plain and precious shoes were lost from the Bible. Uh, okay, well, plain and precious. That it was one manuscript that was just copied over multiple times. Uh, um. Yeah, or the editing of the interview makes it look like it was. Wait, like have that. you not yeah. seen the works of Bart D. Ehrman? here showing the thousands of scribal errors oh yeah that are attributed to Mis misquoting jesus he's got great books on this like what's hilarious is bart d airman like shakes up evangelicals faiths left and right 
But with Mormons, he's like, we're like, yeah, no, no duh. There's been issues <laughs> yeah. over time. And the hilarious part is, though we accept the fact that there have been scribal errors that have made it into the Bible, there are most likely forgeries. I mean, those last seven verses of Mark have basically been proven to have been forged. Frankenstein okay. on, yep. Forged in an inspired way. One of the most. Ba- no. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, there's, uh, we don't see until the fourth century the story of Jesus Christ forgiving the woman taken in adultery that's in John. And when it's in John for the very first time, it is inserted as a scribal insertion mm-hmm. in a different chapter. Okay. So um, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. It didn't mean that it wasn't part of the oral tradition. It doesn't mean that the person that did it wasn't inspired mm-hmm. or that it's not God breathed. But to say that like the Mormon position of the, the the potentiality of scribal errors contributing to apostasy uh, uh, that that doesn't disprove and, anything and it's and I, I think it's funny that they included that in the worst possible light of well there was yeah. a single manuscript that was copied over multiple yeah, times yeah. like like that does not really represent our position the, yeah the but position it does. we do have Brad it does because he's a latter-day saint and he said it. I'm sure. So that is. means that's what all Latter Day Saints believe. <laughs> I'm sure believe. that's true. I, okay, I don't know well, why. After doing this for so long, you don't understand. How <laughs> well, there's, there's this 28 works. seconds. Video proof. <laughs> there's 28 seconds of the clip. Let's see what he's got to do. Readings of the New Testament. Thousands of copies were made. So if a monk wanted to make a change, his change would stand out like a sore thumb. So let me get this straight. The Book of Mormon has zero ancient manuscripts to back it up. Yet, it is criticizing the Bible of being unreliable. So there are no ancient manuscripts to back up the prophecy of Nephi about the loss of many plain and precious parts of the Bible. That is so does <laughs> wrong. That does Joseph so wrong. Smith's translation count as close enough to like one of the scribal I love copies? the bait and switch here. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god. We're going to disprove that the Bible was changed by saying that the Book of Mormon doesn't have ancient manuscripts, which has nothing <laughs> Wait, to which, do by the way, with the, the argument. There's no ancient manuscripts of the Bible. Yes. We don't have the original prints of yes. any of these books. Zero. We have at best 4th and 5th century copies. And by admitting I, that archaeological truth that we don't have the original book of John, we don't have the original book of Matthew, we don't have the original Q document that supposedly Luke and Mark, no, yeah, Luke and Mark were derivative of the Q document. I mean, you know this stuff in the Apocrypha yeah. better than I do, yeah. okay? We don't have any of this crap. We just have the copies and the copies and the copies and the copies floating yes. around that we believe in because we have prayed about it. We've had an experience with God about it. We've tested the truths of the Bible to know that they are indeed the word of God. And we venerate it as Holy Scripture and writ. And you can take that same formula and apply it to the Book of Mormon. You can test its theories. You can live its doctrines. And you can find out through an experience with God and the Holy Writ itself you, that it is true. <laughs> are you saying that if any man will do his will, he will know the doctrine? Mm. Oh, what, well, where'd you pull from? that out of? Uh, I mean, it's got to be some. Oh, that, the Bible. Oh, what? that's where. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> oh, Brad, no, okay, that just, was added to the Book of John by a scribe later. Oh, that crap. wasn't in there. The originally. ink was getting <laughs> was getting faded, so they just changed everything. Yeah, yeah. No, just to clarify, when they say oh, we have original manuscripts of Mark going back to the second century A.D. or whatever, they're talking about three words the size of a postage stamp. Yeah, just barely enough that we knew and that, that like, was from that. That's gospel. the original Mark. Yeah. The the full New Testament people. The New Testament, how we have it today, did not exist. In your King James Version of the Bible, didn't exist until King James. It didn't exist. The there oldest were codex in parts. The- isn't the oldest codex that we have, meaning the complete Bible that we can look back and say, okay, we've standardized the 27 books of the New Testament. Here it is. Our oldest actual codex of the modern Bible. Isn't it the Codex Sinaiticus, which is like 7th or 8th century AD. That's the best you're going to get. And and before that, and even after that, people are putting books in, taking books out. He's talking about some manuscript fading. What about the entire canon and deciding which books go in and which books go out? Mm-hmm. I've read hundreds of mm-hmm. apocryphal texts that are just as old, just as authentic, just as authoritative as anything that the, is in the King James Version. And people switch it out and switch it in all the time. So 
his premise that there was we have the original biblical manuscripts. You have zero original I, biblical manuscripts. I don't bud. think people realize this. I didn't realize this until just a couple months ago. The Protestants and the Catholics have huge arguments about canonicity. That's one of the Catholics' yes. biggest guns in their arsenal against Protestants. Mm. Is okay. The Bible is sola, you know, sola scriptura. How do you even know what's in the Bible? And just, uh, 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 and all of a sudden uh -huh. it gets into like, well, burning in the bosom and the Holy Ghost manifested the truth unto you know all the stuff they make fun of us hmm. for. Yeah, yeah. And they, I they go to that kind of just, stuff. Just to be clear. We still believe in the Bible. Absolutely. Right? Oh, like this sure. isn't a problem for us. God wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. We he, we only bring these things up to say, look, God is still speaking to us today. And yeah. he is giving us further light and knowledge. And we he, believe in the words of the Bible, not mm -hmm. the ink and paper. Mm -hmm. We don't yeah. worship ink and paper. We worship God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm just going to correct myself on the fly here. Uh, Codex Sinaiticus looks like it's mid fourth century. So that's kind of cool, you know, but then again, they said through the comparative writing styles and what do you call it? HMG, which is reading. Oh my gosh. Oh, HMD. HMD. It's just reading. It's such a <laughs> joke. Such a joke, people. There's okay. no, there's no date on the molecules, guys. There's no date on the molecules. You can tell this was written in 300. No, there's no, there's no, that doesn't exist. You just have a, you just have a piece of paper and a bunch of words and you're like, how old is this? I don't know. And you have to read the words and That's they all you compare got. the words to other words that they've designated as having come out of that century and yeah. they say oh this is a third century writing because ah. they don't believe that for example maybe somebody was ahead of their time like these kind of people would literally watch orson wells directing citizen kane and say oh that's a 1960s cinema right yes, there because right. of, of the angles, because of mm. the writing, because of the compelling music. There's no way that came out of the 30s. Anybody that says that came out of the 30s is lying. There's no way that's pre-war. No, Orson Welles, no, he probably died in the 21st century. Yeah. Anybody that says he existed in the 19th century is an idiot. You know, just because, I mean, his, his filmmaking, it, it was so... It was so 1960s, 1970s, 1980s. You know, they they don't think, wow, this dude was literally 50 years ahead of his time. You know, so like Kanye West, Which they'd say is, is a 21st really, century really artist. really good way to get rid of profits. Ah, <laughs> exactly. I see what you did there. They're, they're mm -hmm. so desperate to get these manuscripts back to originality. And the Catholics have a great point. Is they that do. they say the only reason you have these books at all is because of kind of our heritage and people who passed it down. But they all fall to pieces when you look at how the process was. We just talked about the other day, uh, Santa Claus punching uh, Arius in the face, right? To decide yeah. which books are canon, which books aren't canon, which oh, doctrines the, the, are included. The actual dude, not the mythical. Got it's it. ridiculous. It's that, ridiculous. Mm, Saint Nick. But yeah. they're, so, they're so desperate to bring it like the original manuscript. That graphic is a blatant lie. They don't have a single original and manuscript. Unlike them, we're not bringing this up to say that their beliefs are false. Oh, yes, we mm. are. We are bringing these up. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. We are bringing these up to say, hey, look, these are some flaws and difficulties of history that we just have to deal with. And guess what? God probably wants us to be able to grapple with these sorts of things and still choose him. Yes, the Bible is light and knowledge, and there is additional light and knowledge. Let's come and take all the light and knowledge we can get. We're not saying what you believe is wrong. We're just saying that we can be. it, it can literally be dare I use the term added upon Ooh. and you know and <laughs> when you use it when when you use what what they're trying to use as an argument against the Book of Mormon they open themselves up for that argument to be used against the Bible yeah yeah, yeah. I think they overstate their case but we also overstate our case oh 100 like, hey, percent. shut up I don't want to hear that crap shut Latter-day Saints uh, need shut to stop up. how dare you <laughs> what that guy I think his name is Greg what Greg was saying about well I think there was like one and then they copied it and the guy could just change whatever he wanted to. And then they made another copy after that one. Like, no, please. If, if you're going to make such large claims about how all of history went for the most important book in history, do a little more than like try to remember what somebody told you in primary one time. You're right. Nice. <laughs> you're that's right. Not yeah. probably either. I do have two points on this, though. I think that this is one of the strongest arguments that they have against us, actually, because it's true. Once you actually get a lot of records on the Bible. Hey, who's is, me on here? There what's, is what's pretty, going on here. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> what, 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 there what is, is there is there is a good amount of of correlation, and we're not seeing like the tons of stuff getting lost or tons of discrepancies between them, like we sometimes overstate our case. Well, so they make I, a good point there. But the second point in our favor is well, that before when you, you no, read thirty five. No, but before you get off that point, yeah. Um, I realized I forgot to say something I said earlier. Though we do believe that there were scribal errors that did contribute to apostasy, one of the most beautiful statements I ever heard in my religion class at BYU is Professor Turley saying despite some of the issues that the Bible does have, it is actually a divine miracle 
that uh, has required the sacrifice of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, that the Bible exists as complete and as consistent and as true as it does. Without the sacrifice of utter millions, this book would not be as pure as it is. Sure, it's got some problems, yeah. but I can't name another book whose uh, uh, purity has been more fought for and is more amazing. You can't do this with copies of the Iliad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, yeah, it's it's though we believe that, yeah, sure, there, there might've been some errors in it. It's still like the most perfect book out there telling the story of Jesus Christ in ancient Israel that you can get. It's it's impossible to deny that. And our, and our argument isn't so much that the Bible is full of bad, evil errors and false teachings is that the Bible is incomplete. Mm -hmm. It's not a sin of commission, it's omission. It's that it's not complete. That's really our argument. There's weird things in the Book of Mormon, too. There's weird things in the DNC, too. Martin Luther took out the freaking Apocrypha because he didn't like the Book of Maccabees. Yeah, because he didn't like Jews. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so our, our, our argument is simply that the, the, the Bible is marvel. We love the Bible. My gosh, we love the Bible. It's that it's not complete. So cherish what we have, but don't pretend. Don't pretend. Don't fool yourself into saying and, that it's inerrant. Well, it, and it'd be, like, also, saying, it'd be like saying you hate the book of Matthew because you think we should also have Mark, Luke, and John as part of the gospel. Yes. Great, yeah. great way to put it. It, yeah. it effectively becomes a thing where, hey, uh, in the Book of Mormon, where it talks about how a Bible, a Bible, we have got a Bible and we need no mm. more Bible, right? Like, will you stop yourselves from hearing the continued word of God because you've already heard some of what he said? Yeah. There's actually a part in this interview where he reads that verse to him and he said, so do you think I'm a fool for not believing in the Book of Mormon? And to his credit, the Latter-day Saint goes, yeah. I think that. <laughs> that, was, that was a bit of a mic drop. Okay, we got to watch Hold these. on. Gotta I got to make my these. second point, Gardner. Yeah, yeah, I got to yeah. make my second point. Is that when you read 1 Nephi 13, because this is where the prophecy comes from, um, it kind of interchanges between taking out words from the Bible and taking out stuff from the gospel. And I mm. think you can see this as, as two different things, because hmm. what's one of the criticisms that people give of the Book of Mormon? It's, well, the Book of Mormon's Trinitarian. And then Joseph Smith changed his doctrine later and introduced all this other stuff. And our response to that is, no, you just think those verses are Trinitarian because you've been conditioned yeah. to see them as Trinitarian. Mm -hmm. So you can corrupt the Bible without changing a single word of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You can remove plain and precious truths from the Bible without corrupt, without changing a single word oh, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Great and point. some of these things do hang on single words. The, the one third of one verse in the Gospel of John we've talked before, and the word was God. That's like 30% of their argument against You're right. us for the Trinity. And even the way it's written in the Greek that we have can be translated a couple different ways. Uh -huh. And if that one, if it was worded slightly different, where it said, and Jesus was a God, a third of their argument goes away. It's just completely failing. gone. So uh -huh. we're not saying like entire chapters or all this stuff, like the, the long end to Mark, um, the story of the woman taking adultery in John, like these are minor changes that need to happen for things to shift a ton in meaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, I'm glad I didn't shut your mic off when you started And they're doing it now with, with the Book of Mormon, with the equity and, and inequality type of stuff. Great they're point. trying to change mm. the, the gospel in the Book of Mormon without changing any of the words. See, uh -huh. I knew there was a reason we invited wow, you great to the studio, point, Luke. Luke. This is awesome. Okay, so second Alma 7. They're still going after. Okay, mm -hmm. well, let's just check it out here, guys. Another These clip. other ones would faster. The, okay, okay, these ones go yeah. faster. Here we go. In Matthew's gospel, he states that Jesus was born in Bethlehem in oh, Judea. This oh, here we and go. then he quotes Micah 5.2 to show that Jesus fulfills Micah's prophecy. But Micah is not the only prophet who predicted where the Messiah would be born. In the Book of Mormon, the prophet Alma prophesied, and behold, he shall be born of Mary at Jerusalem. Okay. I <laughs> Oh, just as a voiceover. Uh, okay, so yeah, we, we we know this argument, but it's also does anybody else notice his voice always goes Jerusalem? Jerusalem. It always goes down and whenever he talks. More, you know, more, and, more. and I don't know how to go up <laughs> at the end of any <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Dating this, like, it's, sometimes it's <laughs> sometimes it it's hard to tell if he's asking a question. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So anyway, let's keep going. See what he has to say. Mormon scholars try to argue that since Bethlehem is so close to Jerusalem, they can be considered the same place. Uh, was Bethlehem part of the land of the Bible? Well, even today, if you go to Bethlehem, you realize it's essentially a suburb. Have you ever heard of uh, Bethlehem being um, described as the land of Jerusalem? It's not the land of Jerusalem. Bethlehem is 
a city six miles south of Jerusalem. Could you? Is there any way that you could say <laughs> that miles? Bethlehem is uh, is so close to Jerusalem that you could just call it Jerusalem? No. <laughs> and there it is. Well, I, I mean, that guy convinced me. Yeah, I'm convinced. That one random guy. <laughs> yeah, I know that's an expert. You didn't see the little. Oh, the little he's thing an expert. expert. Oh. He said, like a geologist. Oh, a geologist. Oh, no, a geographist. A geographist. I'm, he said I'm Jerusalem surprised, geographist. I'm surprised they used Daniel Peterson's full name at all and didn't just say Danny. Danny, Mormon scholar, <laughs> expert. <laughs> you know. Okay, well, now hold on. So, let's let's well, analyze their argument here. So, uh, that, what do they think that just the Mormon is, church is there more to the clip? Uh, yeah, let's finish saying what the let's. Say, oh yeah, there's uh, like five more seconds. See what, what he says. Jesus was not born in Jerusalem. Alma fails the test of a prophet. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> so they do this with each of the claims. They're like, okay, well, the cool, Bible cool. said this, and the Book of Mormon said this. Okay, so uh, let me just do a really fast uh, version of this. Think about it this way. Alma is living in the new world. He's working with a group of people who mm -hmm. fled Jerusalem uh, almost what, 450, 450 500 years yeah. um, before the prophecy that he's talking about. When he says at Jerusalem, he's talking about where they fled from. He's telling a group of people, a small group of people in the Americas, hey, yeah, Jesus was born back at the place that we left from. That's what he's saying. He he's not like, saying... You, you just need to look at the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words. And behold, he shall be born in Mary at Jerusalem, which is the land of our forefathers. Exactly. It's, it's right there. Oh, there's it's the more. next seven words of the verse. Oh, there's more. So there he is more to it. Yes. He doesn't say in Jerusalem. Nope. He says at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Yep. In Semitic languages, one of which I speak, okay? When you say you're close to a city, you use a prefix, pod, Okay, so like in, in Russian, you would say Podmoskvoy or Podnovosibirskom. That means that you're from a suburb that's right around there. Oh. Now we've lost that in English. So this dweeb, I don't know who this dude is, who's like, oh, that's ridiculous, a suburb, you'd never call it that. You'd absolutely call it that in Semitic languages. You'd say Pod Erusalima, and that would mean a suburb of Jerusalem. In Semitic languages, that makes perfect sense to say mm. something is at Jerusalem or the word, maybe you might translate it under Jerusalem. Jerusalem would and, be a And if it was of. confusing whatsoever, you just look at the next phrase, the next clause, which, which is the land of our exactly, exactly, It's ridiculous. And, exactly and here's, what it is. Here's, the, here's the better thing Joseph Smith knew where Jesus was born. This is it. But he didn't this is it. put it in the Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. A con man would have been, would have been holding the Bible right here and oh, making sure he got it all right so he could lie to people. But he didn't do that. Instead, he inadvertently inserted a perfectly period authentic Semitic linguistic. And I'll Prefix. back you up with that with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, oh, yeah. Ooh. 4Q385, in their discussion of this text, Eisman and Weiss elaborate on the significance of the phrase land of Jerusalem. These are, are not members and they're not talking about the Book of Mormon, but they're talking about this phrase in the Dead Sea Scrolls, land of Jerusalem, which they see as an equivalent for Judah, Yehud. Quote, another interesting reference is to the land of Jerusalem in line two of fragment one. This greatly enhances the sense of historicity of the whole since Judah or Yehud by this time consisted of little more than Jerusalem and its immediate environs. There you go. Mm -hmm. So they're saying that the Dead Sea Scrolls, it gives it the sense of being from that time because it uses a phrase like land of Jerusalem. Ah. And so, that is how we and, eat our and, own words. And this is the irony of it, is this strong <laughs> case against the Book of Mormon becomes a strong evidence for it yes. by examining Bingo. it slightly deeper uh -huh. than Bingo. a surface level reading. Mm hmm. Wow, dude. There's, I feel bad for this Todd Bowling guy because he was <laughs> he asked. He didn't know what some, he was getting into. Yeah, he didn't know what he's he was getting into. He's probably sitting in between Jerusalem and Bethlehem when he recorded and, this and, thing. And, and, and so he's like, well, no, because that one's that way. Uh -huh. And that one's that way. So, and, and no, he has can't these, be the same spot. He has these people trying to use his words to make Alma an yeah. offender for the word. What what tells us not to do that? What tells mm. us to not think mm. of where be an offender for Doesn't make a man a an offender for a word? What is that? Doesn't ring a bell. Are you saying that anti Mormons are following anti Mormon rule number one that they <laughs> never refute scripture? They, they only, only fulfill, fulfill it. it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's keep going. So here's self prophecy. Interesting clip titled self prophecy. Let's see what's got to say. These Book of Mormon prophets prophesied of Joseph Smith, the latter day seer. That's and wait, that's he did it again. He did it again. Wait, he did it again. No. Those Joseph Smith prophets 
prophets, oh, those Book of Mormon prophets prophesied of Joseph Smith, the Latter Day Seer. It sounds like <laughs> it sounds like there's an airplane, like I'm in an RC airplane park, and they're trying to like, <laughs> to like unplugged right at the end of the sentence. They're, they're, yeah, they just like it sounds he, like he needs C a voiceover coach. Yes. Yeah, C3PO just got unplugged. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This was ten so, years ago. This is how they did things. So, back then. so <laughs> all right, let's land some airplanes. These Book of Mormon prophets prophesied of Joseph Smith, the Latter-day Seer, and that the Book of Mormon shall come forth. Since okay. there are no ancient texts that contain these prophecies, we're simply left with the fact that in 1830, Joseph Smith published the Book of Mormon that prophesied that Joseph Smith would publish the Book of Mormon. <laughs> I love this intense music, man. I love this intense music. It's funny. Okay, it doesn't now match the ball's the voice. Drop. Yeah, let him let him finish this. This is why non-Mormon scholars conclude that the Book of Mormon prophets were created through the imagination of Joseph Smith himself. <laughs> what? What? No. what that of, conclusion wait, is drawn wait, from see, what? Oh no, he's gonna have an expert say it right here. I forgot. Okay, okay. 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 Let's let's okay. Back up see. a couple seconds and then say who is the witness of that? Who is the who is the who is the guarantor guarantor of what you are saying? Only you yourself. Huh. Wait, what? Who was that guy? What was he talking about? I don't know. It was a, a linguist. biblical linguist guy. Ah, okay. He's saying, I could make up anything I want to and put it out there, and who can guarantee that? Yeah. Didn't he say Mormon scholars? No, now, he, now he's it? wrong because Joseph Smith wasn't the only person. He thinks that. I, I don't think he's aware of the witnesses, which yeah. is the problem with bringing experts on is you yeah. can be expert in one thing, but that doesn't mean you know. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry, he clearly thing. doesn't recognize that we have three witnesses of the gold plates and well, then eight well, additional three witnesses witnesses. of gold plates and an angel. Yes. And then eight more witnesses of the plates themselves yeah. handled them with their own hands and saw them. There's actually there's actually over 20 people who had some interaction with the plates. I hate yeah. to, I hate to, to to point out the obvious. But there were there's twenty more people documented interacting with the original manuscript of the Book of Mormon. Twenty more than there's any record of people interacting with the original manuscripts from the Bible. Yeah, any you of these any arguments, of <laughs> any of these arguments applied to the Bible would make the Bible out to be a bigger falsehood than the Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet for some reason they don't see the connection between the two. Which has always somewhat baffled me. But anyway, let's keep but going. He, he oh, just he also, just directly lied. And and people and, who know like anything, if they're thinking about this, it's clear that he lied because he said that Joseph Smith doesn't have any prophecies about himself. And this leads the experts to conclude that he must have made it up. Like, no, a, a rigorous wait. scholar would not conclude based on this one metric I'm looking at failing that uh -huh. therefore the whole, no, they'd go and look at it from another angle. Uh -huh. Like s maybe some scholars do that, but they're not being rigorous. Okay. And well, so he just oh, made that up and it's blatantly clear. So from you think anybody it's, so you're, you're committing to, he lied about it. Cause the L word, that's a big one. You say he lied about it and he, he just made he, it no, up. He, he lied. You don't even have to interview anybody because rigorous scholarship you don't subject something to one test, and if it fails that test, you just dismiss, dismiss it and move on. Hmm, There's hmm, other hmm. tests that that's you can like run saying, "Oh, I'm going to run a test. If it doesn't have lead in it, it's not paint from the 19th or from the 20th century." Huh. You know, there's plenty of other paints that don't or have lead like in it. Or like I, I take an H2S monitor into this air, and if it's fine, then that means that the air is safe to breathe. Like no, it this, could be a nitrogen blanket. This Jesus <laughs> character, it was the only one who said he was Jesus. Therefore, okay. Jesus was lying about Jesus. Because because what if we did that? <laughs> the the presence of chiasmus in the Book of Mormon makes any serious scholar conclude that this has to have been an ancient record. That just, no, nobody would buy that. No, they'd be like, well, actually, you have to look at some other points here and consider mm. all the evidence together. No, nope, chiasmus <laughs> is it. But it's like no nope, Mormon. Now. Joseph, nobody prophesied about Joseph Smith, so therefore it has to be. It's like no, that and is also, such a simplistic. Also, the citations that he brought from the Book of Mormon are actually not from the Book of Mormon. They are from the chapter headings that were inserted yes. not by joseph smith but by bruce r mcconkie technical little technicality there yeah, yeah. the book of mormon yeah. never says the words joseph smith in fact there are other groups that don't interpret that as referring to joseph smith himself yeah like yeah. our bigger tonight wow brother. this is crazy Wait, okay well this they don't generation second nephi 3 to be about joseph smith no oh. no they yeah. think it's a native american yeah mm -hmm. that so sounds like anyway a um clip <laughs> number is. four clip number four this generation let's check it out so now Go. they move on to joseph smith, joseph smith uh, prophesied in the doctrine of covenants that the temple here in independence would be built in this generation um 
as a sign uh, to the people. P.S. I am totally digging that Napoleon Dynamite hanging sheet background. I wish they hadn't black and whited it out. That was my childhood, guys. That was my childhood. Family pictures in front of that blanket go. Uh, which prophecy never came to pass. As Joseph Smith's generation was coming to a close, the Mormon apostle Orson Pratt had not yet given up hope in his prophet when he preached. The Latter-day Saints just as much expect to receive a fulfillment an of... Echo going <laughs> he on. just added what the echo. echo? Oh, yeah. He just totally added the... Okay, so first off, I'm, we're going to let the clip play. I'm just pausing for copyright, but I do have to say, you could say that half of the prophecies in the Bible haven't come true yet, yes. and so therefore it is not a true book as well, because I don't know... Christ Wait. hasn't come yet. Jesus what? said the same thing. He said, this generation shall not pass away. He said mm -hmm. the precisely the same words. Well, no, guys, I'm done. This, oh. my faith is shattered. Oh, oh, oh I God, guess Brad, I can't. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get a broom to clean up the oh, show. Or the Bible. Oh, my I, gosh. <laughs> oh, Brad, wait. wait. <laughs> no. We went too far. <laughs> no. Oh. The truth has been discovered. Shattered his faith. I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy there. Uh, Kramer, uh, Trask, something Kramer. Paul Trask, or whatever. That is. It was the sheet. It was the sheet that did it, right? Shattered. His it was face. the sheet that did it, if I'm not mistaken, right? So anyway, um, let's just go back here. Finish what he's got to say. I'm going to rewind for a second because we have to hear him put that echo on. That echo was like really, really. What's awesome. the guy standing in a? What is this? He's saying that he's at the temple. Here, we'll, we'll he's just standing in a field. Yeah. So let's go back to Paul Trask here. Let him finish his <laughs> thing because I want to hear the echo. I'm going to literally bump up the audio for the echo. It's pretty cool. Here we let's go. Let's do it as a sign uh, to the people. Uh, which prophecy never came to pass. As Joseph Smith's generation was coming to a close, the Mormon apostle Orson Pratt had not yet given up hope in his prophet when he preached. The Latter-day Saints just as much expect <laughs> to receive a fulfillment of that promise during the generation that was in existence in 1832 as they expect that the sun will rise and set tomorrow. Why? Because God cannot lie. He will fulfill all his promises. Okay, dude, I'm sorry, but whatever. I, <laughs> that is like a cheesy roadshow version of the Christmas story at the local Baptist church <laughs> when somebody figures out one of these buttons, gives it an echo, and when the person says, I am an angel of the Lord, 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 I think it's like this. That was really funny. That was super even. And right I got to say, no. Orson Pratt was not our most photogenic spokesman. No, no, no. Yes. His beard is amazing. And yes. But they're mm -hmm. still saying, Jesus Christ said this generation shall not pass before X, Y, or Z happens. And technically, many people would say that hasn't happened and, yet. But uh, now, well, heaven forbid, Joseph Smith said it. Something okay. that they are bringing up is that Orson Pratt seems to be saying here that, hey, it's going to be built during the time that these people are alive, right? Saying that God cannot lie. Here's the deal. God cannot lie. We can misunderstand what he says. In mm -hmm. fact, I would argue the majority of history is showing us misunderstanding what God said, you know? Yeah. And so, I, I don't know. I feel like they're trying to hold uh, our teachings to a standard that they do not mm -hmm. pass themselves. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, that's, ooh, that's a really good clip. We're going to have to use that one in the intro. Anyway, let him finish Ezekiel. Saying, oh, we're not finished with the clip. We're not finished with the okay. clip. Here it goes. Jesus also prophesied about the temple that stood in Jerusalem in his day. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. This is the evidence. This is, this the, evidence. is the evidence. Look at it. Uh, <laughs> it speaks for itself. There you go. Those what? two Jesus's comparisons are all you need. prophecy that the Jewish temple in Jerusalem would be destroyed took place in history. While Joseph Smith's oh. prediction that the Mormon temple would be built in Missouri did not. So Joseph Smith fails the test of a prophet. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Wait, he landed the airplane. So Joseph Smith... Smith? Fails the test of a prophet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, keep going. Uh, you know, in uh, where where does it say this? What 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 does it say this in? You know where it says, "Judge not with unrighteous judgment, mm -hmm. that ye be not judged." Where, where does that come from? Is that sounds like a cope that somewhere in the no, <laughs> gospels? <laughs> sounds like a cope. Yeah, no, it's in the gospels. I, this is the kind of stuff that to me comes across as judging unrighteous judgment. You know, we're going to hold people to a standard that we are not going to apply to ourselves at all. Like and that's the funny thing, because he said, well, now let's go to Jesus. It's like, OK, so Jesus also made a prophecy about this generation. He's uh -huh. going to explain how that one makes it. Nope. Nope. It goes to a, a different, different one. one. It, won that, <laughs> a different it won, one. Yeah. involved a temple, at least. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. So it, may, it looks like we're comparing apples to apples. Yeah. We'll take one of Jesus's most easily affirmed prophecies and Joseph Smith's worst one and we'll put them together. Yeah. And, and there Joseph you go. Smith's Joseph Smith yeah. couldn't be a prophet. Simple as so that. So here's Ezekiel 29, 11 through 12. It's talking about Nebuchadnezzar II. It says, with hooves of his horses, he shall tread down all the streets. He shall slay thy people by the sword. Thy strong garrisons shall go down to the ground. It continues on. He'll make a spoil of riches, pray thy merchandise, on and on and on. Um, this siege that he's supposed to be doing on uh, Babylon for Nebuchadnezzar, it, it wasn't successful. He never actually did that. That Ezekiel 29 prophesied about. Oh, oh I've got one. There's this little Babylon book. did surrender eventually, but the city of mm. Tyre that this is talking about, it, it never was demolished. Uh, there's a little book called the Book of so Jonah. You're saying, you're saying Christopher Hitchens was right about everything? Well, no, I'm just saying we need to remove <laughs> Brad, Ezekiel from what? the Bible, Oh, and then it will be good. Okay, that, no, that yeah, makes more sense. That'll fix yeah. all the problems. What yes. the heck are you hearing? <laughs> well, there's the book of Jonah. Nineveh was going to be destroyed, mm -hmm. and then it wasn't destroyed. And I love what Brian Stutzman, our buddy, says. He says, if you don't believe Joseph Smith's prophecies have come true, just wait a while. Yeah. Just wait a while. That's true. Well, no, also, no, that's what having faith would look like. You're not supposed to do that. That's yeah, not that's what true. God wants no, us to sorry, do. sorry, you're right. I take it back. Never mind. The Never Bible mind. is full of prophecies coming true or not coming true based upon the righteousness of the people. Mm -hmm. And the fulfillment of the prophecy is often, oftentimes not a test of the prophet, but a test of the righteousness of the people. No, Cardinal. I mean, we completely forget Israel spent 40 years in the wilderness that should have taken, what, a 10 days journey? But they were in the wilderness for 40 years, not because Moses was an idiot and was not a prophet, but because Israel was acting idiotic and ungodly. So to literally say Moses is not a prophet because they couldn't because they spent 40 years in the wilderness or something like that is not a test of a prophet. It doesn't mean that the prophet failed or okay? God lied or that God lied. It means that the people failed. That's the number one thing that both the Bible and the Book of Mormon teach you is the importance of personal responsibility. Carden, uh -huh. you're introducing a level of nuance that I'm entirely uncomfortable with. <laughs> I will amend my verse. Thank you. I will edit he this He should have out. done it with the reverb sound. And then yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> all right, so let's keep going. Uh, last all right, one yeah, here. So this was all of his debunkings from um, the Book of Mormon and from Joseph Smith. And now I'm just, I put together a little supercut of how the Latter-day Saint that's in the interview is reacting to all this information. Mm. I put in most did of the Did he interview arguments. a real Latter-day Saint or did he get one of his buddies to play well, the role let's, of a Latter-day Saint? Let's think Saint. about it. Let's think about it as we watch these clips. Hmm. Okay, so question, is Carter. this a real Latter-day Saint? Yeah. Greg Gifford. Well, the goatee. Is this is Greg Gifford. I met him while he was touring the country. Greg is a generational Mormon and a lifelong member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so if the reality... Wait, that was That's the John worst... Kramer. Oh, hold on. Guys, that was the worst musical cutoff I ever heard in my life. Hold on. <laughs> Wait, that might have been my editing. Oh, okay. It, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. This was, was an hour and 15 say, minute long movie. Oh, okay, that freaked me out there for a second. So. I was like, who edited this? I'm going to call up this Greg Gifford guy and say, I will do version two of this video for you just <laughs> no, so it's easier Greg to listen to. Greg is the Latter-day Saint. Joel Kramer is the evangelical Oh, here we Bible go. Okay, so here we guy. go. Here we go. Let's go. Greg Gifford, Joel Kramer. Lifelong member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so if the reality is as if it is this way, but we can show with the evidence that it hasn't been corrupted, that then that would nullify that whole need for restoration. In a nutshell. Did his prediction that, the, that our modern Bibles would become corrupt after the time of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, did that come to pass in history? I believe that, well, just say yes. <laughs> from what I've been taught as a youngster, yes, it has occurred. And what does the evidence that you find here going and looking at these ancient copies of the Bible tell you in regards to that? That it has not. Okay. So what? They're all yeah. the same. So they, so wait, they wait, miss. Hold on. It, it they completely on on miss everything that we talked about about how you can corrupt scripture without changing a single word which is a great point yeah yeah and this 
I'm fascinated. Are they going to show any of these original manuscripts? Boy, I'd love to see one. You know, you know how much you could sell tickets to see that for if you had one original manuscript. Please, Joel they Kramer. They showed the expert linguist talking surely, about all the manuscripts. Surely, they they're going to show us. So, what was what? Made a graphic. What was Joel Kramer's specific question again? So he's basically sh- saying, like, "Hey, look, I proved that the Bible." That your idea of one monk and then he gave it to another one after it faded and he copied yeah. it and changed it, that it's wrong. So doesn't this sort of disprove the restoration? He's like, well, I'd like to say no, but... Because uh, what I've well, been I taught. Guess, um, yeah. I guess that would be true if... <laughs> and it's just like complete... So because the guy that yeah. they're interviewing had a faulty idea of how hmm. things went bad and they disproved he, well, he's that. He's disproved the straw man is what he's done. Yes, right? Not that, that is exactly yeah, what's correct. happened. But... To, okay. But to Greg, the Latter Day Saint, his whole world is falling apart, and oh. all the evangelicals watching this are salivating. They <laughs> love this. Oh my gosh! This, they this can't Mormon, get enough. Yeah, this Mormon. We're de- like destroyed his faith live on camera, and thousands and thousands of us watch this. It just we affirm to ourselves. So really fast, this religion. Okay, is. I- I'm sorry. I'm being super superficial right now. But this dude in the glasses is the Mormon, right? He's yes. a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay. And then this other guy, hair, though, this other really guy right Mormon? here, that's the evangelical, that's the predatory evangelical trying to destroy his faith. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the guy in the goatee, right? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, but my theory, okay, that the gospel of Jesus Christ as propagated through the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints just makes you a more attractive person. Again, I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Carden, 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 I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Bring it back to I'm sorry, guys. Like I'm sorry. Card under but your you desk look at you, you look to... at this guy. You look at this guy, all right? And then take a look at this guy. You know what I'm saying? This dude versus that dude, that brother versus that brother. <laughs> like, come on, man. Garden. This guy... I, he looks like he just got out of prison. That's all I'm saying. The scriptures you know? refute what you're saying. <laughs> I, I, I just like, I, look, I do not claim to be pious. See, that is the difference. <laughs> I do not claim to be pious. Oh all right. Gosh. I would judge you based on looks, and Mormons are just better looking. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> well, well, I mean, they are better looking. That's true. Oh, that's funny. All right. So, anyway. so, so, yeah, let's watch a little bit more let's, of his reactions to these different things. And then I want to kind of throw it to the audience, throw it to you guys. Do you think he's an actor or do you think he's an actual Latter day Saint? Okay, let's check well, it out. I'm not, not going to offer a prize for getting it right, but. Okay, here we go. It has occurred. And what does the evidence that you find here? going and looking at these ancient copies of the Bible tell you in regards to that? That it has not. They're all the same. (laughs) Then what would the logical conclusion be? Well, it just shows Nephi was wrong when he said, when he made that statement. You can turn to Alma chapter 7, we're going to Alma 7, the Jerusalem 7, see his reaction to that. Oh, this is that scripture. So, historically, have, have you been to Bethlehem? Which one do you think is right historically? Historically, it's Bethlehem. <sighs> this causes me great angst. I'm. This causes me Who great talks angst? like that? <laughs> <laughs> Who talks like He's that? He's trying to be formal and cordial. All right, this let's give him a break. Let's give him a break. Let's give him. Let, let's give him a, and let's behold. Give him some grace here. <laughs> I'd like to say that Alma is a human. <laughs> that who is a human? Alma. Because we're talking about the Jerusalem thing. No, no, no. Alma? Listen to how he said it. Oh, oh, oh okay. Please. Historically, it's Bethlehem. <sighs> this causes me great angst. <laughs> I'm. I'd like to say that Alma is a human. <laughs> Alma. That he makes Alma? mistakes. But that might just be some kind of regional act. It could regional be regional. Yeah, it could be regional. I don't know. It's kind of, it is a little bit difficult to believe because culturally in North America, almost everybody says the anglicized version of the word Alma. And it's like when Donald Trump gets up and he says, oh, no, I'm a big Presbyterian. People don't realize this. I, I'm a big Presbyterian. Uh, by the way, I'm going to read you guys a scripture at this Christian university to try and get votes. Uh, in two Corinthians, uh, it says, and it's like, bro, if you can't say second corinthians like the rest of us christians me thinks you're not a presbyterian dog not a scholar you know or else you're like faking it for votes i I wonder if there will be more tells okay deuteronomy says that you in that context you cannot make mistakes so i i it's hard for me to declare 
the download. Oh, he said it normally. Well, he obviously made a mistake. <laughs> he obviously I made a mistake. I don't believe it. Oh, I don't right, believe right, it. Right, He's an actor. Cast our votes now? Keep like, <laughs> or, is there any more? Well, no, oh, it he's keeps getting, going. It keeps this going. It's like a five going. minute long clip. That yeah, I, we got another. I we got three minutes. Uh, another places, three minutes yeah. here. Let's see what he's got. We don't have to do the whole thing, but we we just need to bask in like how unsettled and uncertain and conciliatory this guy was through this whole interview and imagine evangelicals like how happy this makes they're just like they're to like watch this rooted. dvd yeah, like yeah. how much they much just love it what granted we would probably love it too if yeah. some uh, catholic evangelical PS. somebody we told them some evidences for the book of mormon and they were like whoa i think i believe it now like we'd all be on that so i'm not necessarily dissing them but like this this is just the gold mine no for i could right never here. see myself salivating over destroying someone's faith in the bible I would never love that. I I think this guy thinks he is not destroying this guy's faith in God. He he sees himself as reaffirming his faith in rescuing the Bible, right? Him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, here's the deal. Regardless of whether you think you're rescuing him or your doctrine's correct, because look, all of us have been missionaries in this room. We've converted tons of people from evangelicalism to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, from Catholicism to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Like, conversion is fine. It's a normal part of the process. It's part of the religious game, shall you call it. Okay. But I got to tell you, this is my only problem with this. I never sat and had that attitude towards conversion. I, I believe God is worth serious consideration, but it should be done through prayer. Like his whole attitude here literally is like a cop trying to get somebody to confess. Oh, it feels that way. Yeah. It, it's not like somebody saying, hey, look, there's additional light knowledge. And I love that you love the Bible. I love that you're evangelical. I love this that you're Catholic. Like but there's, you know, there's there's additional scripture out there that I think you should consider. And I'll go through that consideration process with you. And I'll even guide you uh, with some personal experience towards what I have found works. But at the end of the day, it's between you and God. It's it, and it, it, it's going to be the result of prayer that you convert to our faith if you do. This guy right here is literally like an abusive cop trying to get like a cousin to rat out his other cousin and lie about where he was so they could stick him in prison. <laughs> you know what I'm where, saying? Where like, you have paused, it looks a lot like the King Noah with a Benedi. Uh, oh this. yeah! <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah! Got, like, the Gucci thing going on. Put a big, put a big <laughs> feather crown on that guy. <laughs> yeah. Funny. King Noah with a Benedi. Hey, so, they never yeah, refuse scripture. Big they critiques only to it. this Kramer guy who's making this video. Uh, also, some critiques of the person that they say is a Latter-day Saint for just kind of laying down and saying, yeah, I, I guess if you're right, it's got to be completely Well, but false. also this like is the difference. They always take our layman. Jeff Durbin does this too. He always mm -hmm. takes all volunteer missionaries as a paid clergyman who's made hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars uh, over the, the past decade in his priestcraft. Okay, he always takes some layman. We have a lay clergy. We have volunteers. Okay, if you get our young men's leader here, you're not getting the equivalent of a youth pastor that has a four year doctorate from a fake university mm -hmm. that can't get an accredited, uh, uh, can't get accredited, you know, and then saying, oh, it's a divinity degree or whatever they want to call it. They always take our layman and compare them with their professionals. Here you have a guy. If he is a real authentic member of our church, I can guarantee you he's not a leader of our church. Okay, they're taking a leader of their church and putting up against some layman beating up on him and it's then an trying ambush. to make it. Yeah. This is like, it's yeah. it, now it's consensual. Fine. He agreed to be on camera, but at the same token, it's like, dude, you come across as an abusive cop, not a missionary. But anyway, let's keep going. Made a mistake. But this is literally right here is where they found an entire scroll of Isaiah that dates to 125 BC. When was wow. Isaiah alive? It's uh, 800 BC, you dweeb. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like not Isaiah's That's 700 handwriting. 700 years old. What are you talking about? He's not just showing this guy a cool artifact. He's he's <sighs> driven him. They are they're recording this in like uh, Israel or somewhere. He took him on a 45 minute drive and hiked him up this mountain to show him this spot where they found this thing to make this point that's in the video. So if we play a couple more seconds, this was, Kay. at least in terms of the video, this was why he brought him out here. Like this is, do you have anything like this in Mormonism for the Book of Mormon or any Mormon scripture? Not that I know of. Well, Boom. not that you gosh. know of. But, oh my gosh. I mean, there's entire YouTube channels dedicated to Book of Mormon archaeology. And We've covered some of it on our channel right here. Mm -hmm. That's literally, you could take a Christian. See, again, they. 
No. Evangelicals Pardon. are the worst at this. They always the argue thing. like atheists. They always say like, oh, well, the Bible can't be proven. There's no archaeological evidence of the Bible. And it's like, dude, just because you say that and it sounds cynical and scientific does not at all mean it's true. To say there's no archaeological evidence of the Bible is one of the most foolish statements that can be said in any of the past 2000 years. So by the standards that this Kramer guy is setting up, I think he needs to join the church now that they have found horse bones in Mesoamerica. It's true. That date to the time of the Book of Mormon. It's true. Yeah, true that. The fact Welcome. that those are there. I mean. Welcome, Brother Kramer. Can you deny it now? Like, <laughs> Tell us where and when. We'll come to your baptism. That's not what you should be basing your testimony on, you know? like Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's finish the clip here. Let's see what he's got to say. Then we're done. This is going to be fun. This is the new translation of the Bible by Joseph Smith of the Church of Jesus oh, yeah, Christ of Latter-day Saints. Throughout Smith's translation. Okay. So we see that on the screen right there. So this is, I maybe BYU Studies put this out, but this is the Joseph Smith translation next to the King James Bible. And you can see uh huh, we have full columns next to empty columns. Yeah. So that's what Joseph Smith put in there versus what's actually in the Bible. And of course, they put it as like a, well, Joseph Smith said that the Bible translation was a restoring of the original text that was lost in first, which we don't claim as a church. That's not what we claim. Yep. I look, I was able to zoom in, look at some of the words. This is Moses. The book this, of Moses? This is the book of Moses. Oh. That he's doing. So it's that all is what we have in the Pearl of, of Great Joseph Price. Joseph Smith translation of the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. But they just took it, you know, out and made it its own thing in the Pearl of Great Price. But now he's showing... Um, Greg, the Latter-day Saint, ostensible Latter-day Saint in this video, all these sections, like, look at all the stuff Joseph Smith added to the Bible. And this is going to be his reaction to it. Okay, Jeez. let's play it right here. Let's see what he's got to say. There are multiple pages of additional text that are not found in the Bible. Look at these sections in here. I mean, of, of text that, look at that. Oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, come on. It's like he's reading texts of his spouse, like cheating. Oh, yeah. like, come on. Like, like, I'm telling you, it's like an abusive cough saying, look, look, what, look what your cousin Vinny did. Look what your cousin Vinny okay. did. Do you that see is... the blood? Do you see the blood? I don't Are believe you tell on your cousin LDS Vinny? No way. <laughs> no, I think there's one part where he's like, I didn't know about this. Or... Okay, so here we go. Let's see. I, let's, I see let's see what he's got to say. I mean, we're we're talking some major some stuff. Major addition. Does it? Is this an add-on? Yeah. So what does that say about what Joseph Smith did to Isaiah? What? Dude, anti-Mormons can never, they never talk to us. They're so predatory. They always find the ignorant. They always find the untrained. They always find the, uh, what's this guy's name again, Luke? Uh, Joel Kramer. Joel, Joel Kramer? Kramer yeah. Joel, anytime. I'll fly <laughs> you out. Come on this show. Do that same interview with us, okay? <laughs> Bring whatever uh, entourage yeah. of whether scholars with fake divinity de degrees that you want. Bring them all, dude. Do that interview with us and see how it goes. Because if this guy is real, he's obviously a woefully uninformed member of our church who's probably enjoyed many of the social functions thereof well, and has probably experienced some kind of spiritual elevation in his life. To but you're, 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 you're praying on the weak dog, Brad. To be fair to this guy, if he is a member of the church. Should we just answer that question right now? Yeah. Because I know the answer. You know the you answer? Yeah, you, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's shut no up. way. I hope I didn't. Yeah, I may. Yeah, I do. Okay. So, Hit Jonah, wait, I think, so is I this think guy a guess, member? You guys got to put in your guesses first. And people in the comments, you got to put in your guesses first. Okay. I, think I think we've seen enough to. I think he's a guy that converted to evangelical Christianity. And oh, under he's like playing his former self, and that he's playing okay. his form, yeah. former self, mm -hmm. Ooh, and an he's inception. confederate in the project. He, he's a confederate for the magician. That's what so I he's think. like. This is how he reacted when I found about this self, but now I'm going to act it out. Either that, or else he's just camera. a paid local. Either that, or else he's just a paid local. So you're doing like half and half. He's like half an actor, half a half legit. No, I'm going first with a confederate, and then if that fails, my second guess is a paid local because it was a low budget production. All what right, do you, right. you got to say? This guy hasn't been to church in like 15 years he's 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 a member on record only but there's no way 
he's like an actual believing member. That's my guess. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, by the and, way, you look good today, Quaker. That's a, that's that's a, a a strong ensemble. <laughs> anyway, what is it, Luke? Is this guy wait, a real wait, member Jonah, of the church? Are you, are you committing to he's this, not this guy? This guy is an exmo. He he because he's he's an exmo. And he's coming in and I, I, you, the statement is, well, that's not what I was taught. That's the dead giveaway. Mm -hmm. Nobody okay. would say that. Well, I was brainwashed in my church to believe. Nobody talks like that. It's <laughs> okay. so dumb. All right. Well, Brad, well I, I think he's an actor. I think he's an actor. actor. Yeah. I read a good chunk of the Fair Latter-day Saints response article to this. It's a very good article. It has like over 100 references. The guy just tears this video to shreds. Oh, wow. In a footnote, he said, from personal conversation with Greg Gifford, he is an active member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Really? Yep. Wow. Oh, no. no way. Well, what? he gave them exactly what they wanted. Exactly. That's impressive. Granted, this was 2010. So this is kind of pre, you know, John DeLynn, pre all those other followers of his... Yeah, I carded it. <laughs> yeah. What? I don't his believe his name's no Greg. Way. Greg Gifford. Greg, yep. bro, you got. Unless Fair is lying to us. So that's whoever so wrote the Fair article they, lying to us. The guy who wrote the article says that From he, personal conversation with Greg Gifford. And Greg Gifford said, I'm an active member of the, member of the church. church. Yes. Okay, Greg, Greg, bro, 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 brother Gifford, dog. Okay, that was the single worst performance I've ever seen in my life <laughs> no, on the ecclesiastical fair. battlefield. But no, to be fair, you, you might have been caught off guard and and cry bullyism, which woke scolds evangelicals and the Christian right, as well as, you know, modern anti-Mormons engage in all the time. You're probably trying to be ecumenical. Your best answers were probably edited out. We know that you probably didn't know what you're getting into. OK. And granted, but, at the end, at the very end of the interview, and I think I put in this clip, but we don't have to finish it. He said, I'm going to have to go and look at this stuff for myself because I can't only take your word for it. Oh, that's good. And so like, I'm deeply shaken, but I'm going to go look at and, some stuff. And here's the so. thing. We, when we look at the sort of things that uh, Joel is presenting him with, he's showing him some random copy of Joseph Smith's translation of the Bible that has the Book of Moses in it. He's not mm -hmm. showing him the Book of Moses and being like, this is all expanded. You know, like he's showing him things he hasn't seen before that are weird. Which he should have. Well, no, Wait, I've sorry, never this seen is that like, this No, is... no, no. I, I've never seen that like specific random book that has the book of Moses next to the Bible, right? Oh, really? I have a couple. I'll give you one. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, I've never seen it. So, like, I, I I don't think we should have the expectation that every member of the church should have uh, and seen And you don't have to know apologetics to be a good member of the church. No. Like, he could very well have a much closer relationship with Jesus Christ than me. Like, the fact that I know about Nahum and at Jerusalem, which is the land of our forefathers, doesn't mean doesn't make me a better member. Also, just to be a good evangelical, you don't have to be able to, I don't know, read the original Greek manuscripts of the book of John. You have to be able to live the gospel. That's mm -hmm. the inherent... Again, that is the inherent message of the parable of the good Samaritan. The Samaritan yeah. was was the child of uh, of God, right? Oh, Quaker wants in on another one. Hit it. What, 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 what? I just want to know, Joel, congrats to you. You found the one guy in the church whose <laughs> natural state is to act like a C-list reaction and a yeah. made-for-TV yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, so, I'm curious to the vetting process. Like, did he like do some yeah. mini interviews and then find a guy? And be like, okay, come on. You, okay. You're, you're you good. know, probably. Did he you know, cast a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, or did he just happen to pick a random? Okay. Well, well here's let's the let him finish the clip. Question. Okay. Cool. Well, let's let him finish the clip, and then Brad, you get the final say, bro. So here is the last clip of our boy. Well, it sounds like it came from an ordinary man rather than God. And so... Will you confess? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally what the Inquisition probably looked like on the soft side. <laughs> oh my gosh, Well, <laughs> If the evidence shows that actually the reverse of that is true and Joseph Smith is the one that change the Bible, then wouldn't it be his followers and, and the church that he's associated with that are in serious eternal trouble? Brad, you got so, something to say. Oh, God. I'm realizing why this is making it look so much like he's an actor. It's the music. Ah. That, the heavy lifting that that music is doing to like color the way we're perceiving yeah. his neutral face. It needs more echo. 
Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, that I think is a big part of why he's coming across as like an actor for this. But it, yeah, it, let it's it like finish. the editor of uh, it's like the editor of Intervention. You know, when they're finally telling the young kid that he's got to stop his boozing because it's hurting the family, right? And they put the intense music and they come in on his face. Now, unfortunately, actually, the Emmy Award winning editor of Intervention was actually Mormon. And he was in my ward. So that's a bad analogy. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, yeah, we've got our intervention going on right here. Let's go. Hmm. Boy, that's scary. Do you know of any prophecies that Joseph Smith himself gave that failed? Yeah, I do. Is there any way to look at this other than that he fails the test of Deuteronomy 18? When you apply the scripture verbatim, then it does. It paints a paints a sorry picture. Of oh, I don't, dude. I no, don't no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no way, dude. Come on. This is just so bad. This is not the oh. way. When Jesus said, "By their fruits ye shall know them," he wasn't referring back to Deuteronomy eighteen. Jesus was talking about how by their fruits ye shall know them. Like, do they bring you closer to God, mm -hmm. or do they lead you further from Him? Right, like. This is the kind of he's not saying, did they make a prediction that in uh, 2050 something's going to happen? Well, you have to wait until then to know whether or not they're a prophet. No, 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 yeah. no. That's not what he's saying. Okay. Well, also, I want to defend I want to defend this Greg Gifford guy. He's the member, right, Luke? Yeah. Yep. OK. Jonah Let's, doesn't believe it, but. Okay. Oh, no, I got you now. Okay. Well, I'm doing real time oh. research on okay. this right okay. now. Let's talk obvious motivations. We know the motivation of the guy interviewing Brother Gifford here. It's that he wants to, you know, destroy Mormon faith and uh, replace it with evangelical faith and so on and so forth. So his, his motivations are obvious. But why would an untrained layman go into a situation where there is paid clergy uh, people so uh, convinced of their faith and their beliefs and their point of view and the details of that point of view that they're going to make a documentary about it. Why would you be involved with that if not under pretenses of if we're giving the guy grace, he was probably trying to be ecumenical. And you can tell by his answers also, he's not trying to give offensive answers either. He's not saying, no, I think you're lying and recycling old anti-Mormon tropes, just like neo-Nazis recite old anti-Semitic tropes. I think you're recycling old evangelical tropes and I can prove it. Mm. You know, like it, it, he's not saying that because he's not combative like us. OK, he's literally saying like, well, I, I think he made a mistake because that's like the nicest thing that can be said. This right here is not a question of evangelicalism versus Mormonism. It's literally a competition of aggression. OK, hmm. aggression versus ecumenical cooperation. Mm -hmm. This Greg Gifford guy is trying to cooperate with his interlocutor, it seems. So um, let's let he's, him finish He's here. trying to be reasonable. He's trying so to like be reasonable. So props to him yeah. for saying if the evidence leads another way, then I'm going to be okay with accepting that conclusion. It's just that they intentionally got a guy that doesn't know anything, which yeah. isn't a diss on his like membership or or. Well, and it just makes the documentary worse. Because like one of these things are like the kind of things that bring you closer to Jesus. Right? Yeah. Like, this isn't what we focus on in church. At least it shouldn't be. Yeah. You can go the other direction and be like, I know all the stuff. I know all the facts. Exactly. Let's let yeah. him finish. Let's let him finish. Last 44 seconds right here. Go. Joseph. So you're saying that he's failed the test, but you don't want to put him to death. I don't know what to believe anymore. Sometimes I'm, I totally see what you're talking about and it's, for me to answer your question, it's gonna take a lot of study. And I so have to go. come That's good. to grips in my own mind as to, I can't just take your word for it. I have to study Absolutely. it out for myself. Absolutely. All right. And okay. Okay. Props to the editors for putting that in as well. Okay. okay. So, no quarter. All around. No quarter. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. Jonah, what do you okay, have for right. us? Okay. All right. So I'm looking. I just can't believe that this guy is it I in mean, his bio. Star on. of Joseph Smith versus the Bible. 
Okay, so no, so here's what I'm finding on the the blogosphere here, which never lies. Yeah. So nor does <laughs> nor does Wikipedia. You, you, you might have found week. what I found before I found the fair. Did article. you? Find, okay. Did you see this? I've, yeah. That there's another Exmo DVD produced at the exact same time called Bible versus Book of Mormon, and in it there is an ex Mormon, or excuse me, there is a totally active and believable member of the Church of Jesus Christ whose name is Clifford Gregory, who has a goatee. Mm-hmm. And who says, I'm really struggling and I think maybe everything I heard, I was taught by this cult and blah, blah, and I'm brainwashed and thank you for freeing me. So, I call BS. I think Pharrell the S was lied to. That guy's one of those guys who's like, oh yeah, I'm an active member of the church. They, they still, they always say that. They always say that. I'm an active member because John DeLynn calls himself a Mormon whenever the Washington Post or the New York Times calls. That is true. John DeLynn always says, yes, I'm a Mormon. I'm a Mormon. He literally converts our faith that you get baptized in based upon belief into some kind of funky ethno religion as though like you don't have to go to synagogue and you're still a Jew, but you got to go to church and hold a temple recommend if you're going to be considered a Mormon. Actually, you don't have to have a temple recommend, but you actually have to be a Mm -hmm. functional member that's baptized baptized in the church. And if you are excommunicated, you're no longer a member of our church. You're no longer a Mormon. So anti-Mormons lie. That's what people forget. John DeLynn calls himself a Mormon. Nemo the Mormon calls himself a Mormon, even though he has openly confessed on his own show that they will not give me a temple recommended. He utterly refuses to throw in the quitmormon.com towel. You know what I'm saying? Well, because then he ceases to be relevant. Exactly. 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 Which is kind of already happening as we're moving away from the term Mormon. And I just just want to say to all you evangelicals out there listening to this, guys, this doesn't work. Okay? This approach doesn't work but sitting down at a table and just being like well he said there was gonna be a temple and then there's not a temple and all these original manuscripts boom like you're not gonna and crush someone's faith in five minutes of this ridiculous and here's cherry picking wh- here's why it doesn't work is because when you apply this same type of deconstruction to your own faith it Cur- yes. will destroy it i've seen this happen with yes. people that i know do this who- to your marriage it's toast yeah <laughs> And, and, and I, I've seen this happen with people that I know who, in leaving the church to become evangelical, then applied the same sort of things, the same yep. sort of standards that they had yep. to their yep. evangelical yep. faith and realized, oh, this doesn't hold water right. either. Mm-hmm. So then you apply it to your family, then you apply it to your patriotism, then you apply it to the school that you went to, then you are just an alone person floating out in the ether with your own moral system that you don't even know where it came from. And mm-hmm. you're sad and you're empty and you're alone and... And Jeez, Luke got dark. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yeah. Really? yeah. She took that one man. to 11. <laughs> Woo! But, but like Cardin was saying earlier, this is when you're arguing like atheists. Yes. And this yeah. is not the way to build people's faith. Like, I think mm-hmm. one thing that I want to say, I want to make sure that we try to do a better job of this. I, I This is one thing I want to be doing better in my own life is try to point people towards Christ and help them come nearer to him. Right. Rather than say, like, try to prove them that my way is right. I'm feeling guilty right now. No. <laughs> I'm feeling really guilty right now, Brad. Don't, don't feel guilty about this. <laughs> don't stop, Brad. I, I want to After get spending of... 45 minutes just dunking on an evangelical <laughs> argument against our church, uh, having only made, made two reference to personal prayer, I'm feeling a little bit guilty right now, Brad. <laughs> don't feel guilty. Here's the thing. I, I think that we need to do a better job. I, I, I don't know. I've just been reading uh, a lot of the New Testament recently, and they're talking about like how we shouldn't be contending with one another. And I'm, I'm like, guys, let's build on what we agree on. You're not going soft on me, are you? <laughs> I'm the Canadian one. Clearly, yes. No, so here's the thing. I think that we need to build on where we agree. We need to build towards God, find how we can be like Zion, be of one heart and one mind, right? And build toward understanding and coming to know Jesus Christ and coming to know God, like it says in John 17. Like, we need to be able to be one. So let's focus less on how we might have differences of opinion and focus more on where we actually have things in common, right? Like, how different of a video would this be if this guy instead was approaching this with like, hey, how many things does the Book of Mormon have in common with the Bible? Where is it an additional witness to the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. Oh my gosh, this is another testament of Jesus Christ. 
how powerful of a witness is that when you start looking for the things that we actually have in common? I, I think that's what the scriptures want us to be doing. By the way, mm. you didn't notice this, but right as you said, witness, how powerful a witness, <gasps> your rear light went on. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, the that flicker. was good. That was good. So it was like, how powerful <laughs> of a witness. Oh. <laughs> right behind <laughs> breath. Oh. Nice. <laughs> it was awesome. So anyway, uh, let's keep the conversation going in the comments below. And also, if any of you guys are friends with Brother Gifford, like, let's get him on the show. Let's teach him a thing or two how to handle these cats or brother or if you Gregor, have an update you know, or, i mean this thing was 13 years ago so yeah yeah let's do it let's just see where it's going you know um is he a raging alcoholic as uh luke hansen <laughs> as luke hansen what? predicts is he still is, a handsome devil is he That's still a thing. handsome devil uh i don't know luke you gave a pretty dark prescription for decline after deconstructing <laughs> no, 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 one's no, faith. He, you know at this point you know, i didn't say that was him I, is, well, I said uh, that's deconstruction. Oh, you did, oh, you just did what Kramer was trying. Yeah. To do. Okay. Oh, cool. Too. So anyway, okay, um, let start. us know what you guys think. Let's keep the conversation going in the comments below. If you like the content, please consider contributing on Venmo or on Cash App. You can check us out at Ward Radio on both platforms. Also, sign up for our newsletter on WardRadio.com. And if you haven't had a chance yet, please consider subscribing to the channel, like the video, and if you want to participate in our live streams and be able to, you know. Um, have the cool emojis and all that other stuff when things are live, please consider joining this channel. You can press the join uh, button at the bottom of this video. Either way, it's been real and it's been fun and it's been real fun. For this and more, check us out on wardradio.com.